Chainsaw Man is the hardest series that I have ever tried to describe. When talking to someone who has never read the manga, I don't even know where to start. The series is about a boy named Denji who just wants to touch some boobs. Oh, and he can grow chainsaws out of his arm and hands. There are these things called devils and they terrorize humanity, some being as strong as a typical human and others having the strength to wipe out thousands of people in just a few seconds. Also, it has maybe the biggest top in all of fiction and Makima, and really hot girls pop up throughout the entirety of the series, and you can count on insane amounts of violence in almost every single chapter. Trying to describe Chainsaw Man is like trying to explain to someone who hates sports why I love watching the Green Bay Packers play football. It just doesn't register to non-sports fans. But for those of us who have read the 97 chapters of insanity that is Chainsaw Man, it is simply impossible to just move on with our lives. Once you experience this story, it holds in your mind like a virus, infecting everything you do. No matter where I go, I hear the roaring of a chainsaw on the back of my mind. Surrounded by the fallen characters that gave me such joy when they were alive, and sorrow when they died. I already made a video about why I think you should read the series, but there is still so much more to discuss. In this battle-focused series, one of the reasons, I think, that makes it so hard to describe is the role of horror in the series. The genre and tone tend to pinball around as the story moves on, and the influences of horror are plain to see. It is literally called Chainsaw Man, and Fujimoto has cited how much he loves Texas Chainsaw Massacre. But for this video's purpose, I want to discuss the role of cosmic horror in the series, and how I think it is incorporated better than almost any other battle folk series I have ever read. Cosmic horror is focused on the unknowable aspects of the horror genre, but here I'm not interested in the original Lovecraftian idea of pure cosmic horror, but how it has seeped its way into more popular genres like Battle Shonen. Let's even take superhero movies for example. The climax of a lot of these movies divulge into a cosmic horror-esque threat that isn't really a character at all, but supposed to be some horrifying creature, something that we can't understand but has the ability to end the world. Adding an element of cosmic horror to a story is enticing, but also hard to pull off when the entire genre isn't actually horror. A lot of high fantasy series have unknowable creatures as their big bad, and sometimes it works and you feel the same dread as the characters, but more often than not, it is hard to get invested in this type of a battle, in this conflict between a character we love and an unknowable being. Our characters are often so strong that there isn't really even tension, and it just feels like a plot hurdle more than a terrifying enemy. When it comes to anime and manga, we have our fair share of this as well. Berserk follows a traditional fantasy literature route with many of its cosmic horror pieces, but even something like the first handful of episodes in Attack on Titan leveraged that as the entire base for the series, and in both of those cases, it's done extremely well. But if done improperly, the cosmic horror elements can kill the momentum of a series and turn what was a cool idea into something something hollow, the big bad unknowable villain that actually takes away interest from our characters and the main plot so we can have a big battle. And this is where Chainsaw Man comes in and how it applies cosmic horror elements better than anything I have ever read. Chainsaw Man leverages cosmic horror throughout the entirety of the story to the point where you can certainly make an argument that it is more of a horror story than a battle shonen. I think there are two distinctions happening with the cosmic horror elements that make the story go. One being a traditional Lovecraftian-esque cosmic horror, and the other being character-driven cosmic horror. The perfect example of the unknowable horror in Chainsaw Man is the character's journey into hell. In this instance, our characters are transported to a place that is literally out of this world, and the powers of the place are almost beyond our comprehension. This resulted in some of the best panels in the series, and leads to the biggest flip for the series as well. I don't understand how literal hell is a power tameable by a human, or why astronauts split in half praying exists in hell, 
but man does it terrify me. The characters don't know what in the world is going on, and neither does the reader, but we do know that whatever it is will have dire consequences for the lives of our characters. And this is a fantastic use of cosmic horror in a battle-centric narrative. The things our characters experience feel otherworldly to them, and so the readers get that same feeling. This is an example of real cosmic horror being leveraged in a battle series. This isn't just a big scary villain who is supposed to be unknowable, but there are things at play in this world that are just so far out from our understanding that the only emotion we can feel is terror. Each fight from this point on has this feeling that it could go anywhere and anything can happen, and certainly that feeling exists earlier in the series because of how much cosmic horror elements are in Chainsaw Man. And with a series where characters die all the time, the journey into hell only adds to the cosmic horror, but I don't necessarily think that these cosmic horror elements would be noteworthy on their own. It, it's just a really great example of traditional cosmic horror being perfectly integrated into the world building of a battle series, and something that I think a lot of series try to capture in a pure way, but just aren't able to have the impact that Chainsaw Man is because of its world building and its artwork, but it's taken to another level when you add the character cosmic horror element into it. And this isn't as simple as putting the reader in the same mindset as the viewer, but you need to do a lot more things to not make a character feel hollow, but also make them feel unknowable. How many villains have you seen who have the power to topple the world, and yet they are uninteresting? There is no tension between the reader and the villain because you know the world won't actually go to shit. And this does overlap with good character writing, but I think elements of horror take this idea a step further. Chainsaw Man doesn't just craft well-rounded characters, but skews our idea of who they are. The perfect case study for having a character embody cosmic horror is Makima herself. Even though we spend a lot of time with Makima, I still don't feel like I know her, at least through 99% of the story. Makima constantly acts in ways where you aren't truly able to understand her, which imbues her with a total unknowable quality. She is one of the most feared people on the planet, and yet we don't know what she truly wants for the vast majority of the story. But what I find most terrifying about Makima is how, just like Denji, even though I know I shouldn't, I fall in love with her. And not even in a meme, bark, bark, bark way, but a legitimate connection with Makima, like she is a person I actually know and care for. Just like Denji, Makima has the ability to trick the audience into caring for her, and it makes it all the worse when she ends up stabbing us in the back. Every time Makima does something terrible, there is this horrifying feeling that comes over the reader. The feeling that we have fallen in love with something that is unknowable. Something that would kill everyone if it could, and yet we still do anything she asks of us. We didn't know anything about the one we fell in love with, and yet we did so anyways. Chainsaw Man taps into a different type of horror here, one that can only be explored through a character as unique as Makima. She isn't your run-of-the-mill villain, hell, she isn't really a villain for most of the series, but a morally great person who works for the good guys, or so we think. By making the reader lust after Makima, we end up feeling the same sense of dread when it comes to pass that she's been controlling everything from the start. We are just a piece in her game, there was nothing that we could ever do about it. Makima is an evolution of cosmic horror, creating this type of anxiety in readers that is normally reserved for creatures from the abyss, not a person you fall in love with. Both of these aspects of Chainsaw Man makes for some jaw-dropping moments. These moments have equally as strong of an impact the longer they sit with me. Makima Killing Power in particular hit me hard on reread. The first time I read Chainsaw Man, about a year ago, I finished the entirety of the story in two days. My plan was to wait until the anime was released before picking the story back up, so I could let some of the nuances fade from my mind and get a second wind when I experienced the story in a new medium. 
then on January 22nd, the Green Bay Packers played the San Francisco 49ers and blew a lead to lose in the playoffs for yet again another massively disappointing season. The sadness that brought me forced my hand. I needed to reread Chainsaw Man so I could feel an infinite amount of sadness. Within a few days, I had reread the entirety of the story, and the shock of certain events left me even more stunned than the first time that I read them. As the narrative barreled towards Denji letting himself be Makima's pet, and then that doorbell rang. And just like the ting from the doorbell flooding into Denji's ear, the memory of what happened next appeared in my mind. Then I flipped the page and just sat there as Denji contemplated going to the door. Surely I couldn't have forced my way into the situation. I've already felt enough pain, haven't I? Why force myself go through all of this again, end up stuck on a page, terrified to see what comes next, even though I know what happens? Can the loss of one sports game send me back into a deep well of sadness where I need to reread a story to cause myself even more pain? But just like Denji, I am compelled to follow orders and turn the page. And the pain of the story floods back as power explodes. It is this kind of dread that keeps me coming back to Chainsaw Man, a story that has perfected the use of cosmic horror into a narrative that focuses on so much more. Chainsaw Man isn't just about being terrified, but it's about falling in love and dealing with the pain when that love goes a way that you didn't expect it to. Chainsaw Man is one of the very best stories I have ever read, and the cosmic horror elements of it just bring it to a level that I don't think is really reached by many other series. And yet, after making two videos of the series, I still have a tough time putting into words just how impactful Chainsaw Man is to me. But I hope if this video's done anything, it makes you want to go back and reread Chainsaw Man and experience all of the absurdity and range of emotions that it gives you once again. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I love talking about Chainsaw Man, and don't worry, there will be plenty more Chainsaw Man videos coming in the future. I feel like it's one of the series that I need to make more videos on because it really does help me make more sense of my feelings on the series and to try and understand how it was able to achieve everything. So thank you guys for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one.